Welcome to the Brain Coffee Podcast, where Drs. Eric Luthard and Albert Kim unlock life's little mysteries about health, wellness, entertainment, technology, and how the brain makes sense of it all. Sit back, relax, and open up your mind. You look a little tired this yeah, morning. Sorry, my puppy. It, it, it wakes up every two hours to go to the restroom, or you know, not the unfinished basement, basically. <laughs> it's it's further unfinishing the basement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right, 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 exactly. Yeah. Kind of regretting getting it, but no, no, it's cute. <laughs> you were rubbing your temple. Do you have a headache? Yeah, a little bit of headache. Just didn't sleep so well. Was also working late. Probably just a tension headache or something like that. What do you think caused that headache? Probably your tolerance to pain. Not sleeping goes goes down, first of mm. all, you know? Mm -hmm. So any mm -hmm. little ache, you're gonna feel more. But then I think also, you know, tension headaches are always up here or back here. I, it uh -huh. probably has to do with how you, you maybe scrunch up your, your eyes or, uh, you know, or grimace a little when you're like muscle. You think it's a muscle tension thing? I think it's, thing? I think oh, it's a muscle ch tension thing, yeah. You know, as neurosurgeons, we are seeing headaches all the time. Right? Oh, yeah. Right, you know? And everybody's always worried that, like, you know, is this headache indicative of something? And, you know, the honest truth is sometimes when I get a headache, I always, I sometimes worry, like, do I have a brain tumor? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. And, uh, Natural. <laughs> but it's interesting, how, kind of, the, the diversity, of how many headaches there are and how different they are. Yeah, yeah, And, right. you know, kind of what it all means because, yeah, actually you worked in the laboratory of one of the, you know, kind of premier headache specialists. Yeah, you know, migraine back in the day, uh, and scientist. Migraines. There, it's interesting, the competing theories on what's causing a migraine. Right, right. So you were saying how we see all these people with headaches in the clinic. Uh, I think uh, it's funny that uh, almost all of the headaches we see are usually not related That's to right. the brain tumors or the little incidental findings we find on That's MRI, right? right? That I mean, is right. you yeah. take a thousand people with headaches, probably you'll find disease and I don't know, just a handful or something that's like right. that, right? That's I mean, right. that's probably true. And the, it's probably even a fewer number that where the, the lesion in the brain is actually causing the headache. Yeah, right? yeah, and that's the, right. I think uh -huh. that's true. I'm sure you say this a lot. You know, sometimes we have to do surgery, take something out, and I'm like, well, you know, honestly, this is not gonna help your headache. That's <laughs> right, that's right. Actually, yeah. I'm probably gonna make it worse for a few weeks. Right, yeah, <laughs> if, if, you, if you drill a hole in somebody's skull, usually you make their headache worse. Yeah, you know right, what I mean? right. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. let out the evil humors. Back to this idea uh, about migraines, you know, a lot of people have migraines, hereditary, mm -hmm. but how do migraine headaches happen? So the idea that this guy uh, came up with was that actually your, your neurons are doing it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. your neurons are releasing substances that then feed back onto your blood vessels in your brain. And then the blood vessels in your brain, they change size, and then that causes neurons on those blood vessels to respond with some kind of pain. So it's a sort of feedback. Yeah, right, right, it's a negative feedback yeah. loop. And uh, I mean, blood flow and, and how it relates to headaches is really interesting. I mean, yeah. like, for instance, is kind of altered blood flow the reason that you get a brain freeze? Oh yeah, yeah like ice cream or yeah, you know, yeah, smoothie exactly. king or yeah, whatever? Yeah, exactly. The most important question of this morning is <laughs> what causes brain freeze? Yeah. Go. That's yeah, super important. Yeah. I mean, I used to think uh, that the pain neurons that are basically surrounding your brain, I, they also uh, go to the top of your mouth, mm -hmm. you know, in the mm -hmm. back of your mouth. And so I always thought, in the past at least, that maybe when you're, when you're taking that ice cream in, you're, you're making those neurons cold, and then you refer. It refers kind of in, the pain, like all the other neurons. Right, 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 you inappropriately refer that pain back to, your, the, the pain, to the, around the, your the brain. Pain. But that might not be true is what I heard recently. Right. Tell me more about that. I think you know more about that than I do. And it's something I just came across, but basically they, they, did an ex they ran an experiment where they fed people ice cream <laughs> and they would have to raise their hand when they got the brain freeze headache and then you know, put it down. Uh -huh. And they correlated that with blood flow measurements uh -huh. in the brain, like in the middle of their brain. So it's fascinating. So what happens is when you have that headache, blood flow through one of your arteries in the brain, it's called the anterior cerebral artery, uh -huh. it, it increases. It increases. Yeah, it increases. So basically, increased blood flow, and I think the, uh, you know, the diameter of the vessel is getting bigger. You get the brain freeze headache then, and then as soon as that blood vessel constricts down, mm -hmm. probably in response, then you don't have it anymore. That was really, correlation, but it's interesting. That's Could, right. Well, it it, it kind of matches up with kind of migraine type headaches, yeah, right? No, no, because you're right. clearly, uh, with that irritating process uh, where the neurons are releasing serotonin to kind of cause you know, vasodilation, meaning the blood vessels open up, that's when you get the migraine headaches. Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. So maybe when you're dilating, you know, the ice cream makes your, your blood vessel dilate, and then the pain neurons along that, uh, that uh, vessel are now feeding back inappropriately. Right, And right. then you think you have a, you think you're dying <laughs> <laughs> because of ice cream. <laughs> totally. <laughs> but usually that doesn't stop me from eating the ice cream. No, yeah. I, I keep going, yeah, yeah right. I certainly, you know, definitely. I'll pause, yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> Brain freezes aside, in your mind, what, what headaches do you worry about? 
as a neurosurgeon, we're always getting questions. I've got this headache, yeah. right? You know, yeah. and the thing is, like, I think the vast majority of people experience headaches all the time. Sometimes right, right. they're migranous, you know, meaning they're throbbing. Sometimes they're tension, like you described earlier. But which ones, if you were to kind of say, okay, you hear this type of headache that you would worry about it? Yeah, right, right. It's probably similar to how you think about it. But you know, first I ask, is it like a headache you've had before? That's less concerning, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if it's a new type of headache, or you never had a headache before, and you have this sudden new type of headache, that's a little more worrisome. Right, right. Um, but you know, still a lot of those are not going to be um, right. The vast know, majority are be dangerous fine. at all, right? That's right. That's right. So you know, now we get to things like well. Okay, let's talk about brain tumors then, right? You mm -hmm. and I both do brain yeah, tumors. Right, so right. if you have a baseball in your head, I mean, how, what kind of headache is that going to give you? It'll probably give you headaches that you tend to get late night, early morning when you early wake morning, up, Early morning, that's right. right. Mm -hmm. I guess, what are your thoughts on why well, get, late night, early morning? It, it's interesting. It gets at this issue of blood flow, yeah. where basically you, you definitely retain the, the amount of carbon dioxide that you have uh, kind of in your body. Yeah. You have a lower breathing rate, so you retain more CO2. Right, right. Um, through the evening, and so that's causing vasodilation, which is causing, you know, I think, you know, again, vessel expansion associated with your tumor and higher pressures in your brain. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Everyone has a little sleep apnea when they're sleeping. That's right. Right. That's right. And so your brain, I mean, you have a fixed skull. Right. You can only fit so much into it, and if your bl blood vessels dilate, that's just more pressure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, right. It's like shaking up the soda can. <laughs> exactly. You know? I guess the other thing, if the headache is associated with something else, like you know, you're weaker in your arm. Oh, you know, you know, yeah. you know you've lost blind your, in one eye, right? right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like you're right. numb in a certain spot, you know, where basically kind of the, the headache correlates with some other neurologic deficit. That certainly would, you know, ramp up my concern. Yeah. Although that's... interestingly, migraines can do that, too. You know, oh, right. Yeah. I mean, you can go blind in some types of migraine. That's right. That's right. That's right. I totally agree with you. If you have that severe headache and you have some neurologic deficit. That is 100% concerning. But, That's right. You know, in the case of stroke, like, uh, and I'm talking about stroke where you don't have enough blood to your head, mm -hmm. you know, suddenly you have your arm or your leg not working and you don't have a headache. It would right. be unusual to have a headache, right? That's right. That's so, right. Uh, the headache doesn't always help you, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. But I think, you know, everybody has the anxiety about the headache. Oh, yeah. You know? I, I, I guess the totally other thing is that persistent, unremitting headaches. Right. You know, like, uh, for instance, if somebody is not usually a headache person and then has, like, nonstop headaches for two weeks, right. then that would be, you know, of higher concern. Yeah, definitely, definitely.